A lot of people were confused when I had said that acetylene has a hotter flame than propane, and that I also said that propane puts out more heat per volume than acetylene. So part of that, while we'll talk about the gases specifically later, but part of it is people just don't understand temperature and heat are not the same thing. Heat is a quantity of what's inside of the energy that's inside of something. And we have a unit called specific heat, which is the amount of heat that is contained per the temperature change. And it's different for different items. It's not all the same. Now, we have two cups here, <clears throat> same amount of water in each one. You'll have to trust me on that. We're checking how accurate our inaccurate thermometers are. This one has been varying between 64.7 and 64.5. The other one has been staying right on 64.5. So there's little inaccuracy, but they're close in there. Now, what we're gonna do over here, we're heating up the same volume of two types of metal. These, and they have the same conductive surface because these zinc pennies, thanks to your government after 1982, 82 is a change year, they could be either way. Um, these are all 84 I used as the cutoff to make sure that they were zinc pennies. Um, so those are zinc pennies with a copper plating, so they'll have the same conduction. These ones over here are old copper pennies, which I went all 1980 or before. Now, the heating elements in here, we've got about a thousand watts in here. You can see that besides our safe open conductors that we have with 120 volts on each of these has got a ground connection to the pan. Um, not exactly what you'd expect if it was a permanent installation, but for temporary, it's okay. The fact that these containers are ventilated will let the hot water as it heats up go through them. And what we'll do is we'll come up to boiling and we'll keep this at boiling for a while. So that will transfer roughly 212 degrees into both of these batches of pennies. I'll dump out all the water from each. We'll have one of those thermometers in each of those containers and we'll see how much the volume of copper changes the temperature of the water and how much the zinc. But since this is only a thousand watts, we're gonna be waiting a while, so we're not gonna watch it heating up. Okay, so we're gonna add our pennies in here. We uh, didn't quite get it up to boiling. Didn't really have enough in there. And shake out all the water. These are the zinc ones. Thank you, Mr. Government. So we will put those all into here and see how much that raises up the temperature and drain out the water again. So we're not adding in hot water directly. And this one here is the one with the copper pennies. And we'll see, see how much heat difference we get between the zinc and copper. Now this is for equal volumes. So, and actually the heat, specific heat between zinc and copper is pretty much the same per weight. That's the fact of the copper weighing more is where we had uh, actually more energy in here on the, uh, the copper one. It's a few degrees hotter, not, uh, not a huge amount. Might not be stabilized out, but let's get on with the, that little experiment. The main part here was really getting more into differences with acetylene and propane. There's a lot of different things with uh, differences of heat and temperature. And all of the information I got on this came from the engineering toolbox is where I picked up the information. I've got different uh, charts and catalogs and things to look through, but I find a lot of times they've got the information when I'm just lazy. So it works. 
But the big thing that came with all of this was when we started, and we'll have uh, Bert can post this again, but we had, was talking about the acetylene flame being hotter, the actual temperature of the flame being hotter than propane. And what we've got here are the temperatures. This column is with oxygen for combustion. And this one is with air. So like if you have your propane torch and it's at uh, 1900 degrees, 67, almost 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, if you add oxygen instead, you're at the 2500 degrees for your peak temperature. But we go up here to acetylene and just in air, we can get that 2500 degrees. So like your plumber's torch, you can get 2500 degrees out of it just with burning it with air. But if we burn it with oxygen, we can get almost to 3,500. So we get a really hot peak temperature. Now, how can you have more BTUs for a given tip or more BTUs per the, per the uh, volume of the gas? It's totally a different thing. The propane puts out more BTUs per volume also you can get more volume through the tip because you can crank it to a higher pressure and have it be safe yet what happens with the acetylene it's not while they regulate the pressure of your unmixed acetylene that's for a secondary safety figure the as you see before your regulator your acetylene running at 150 psi 200 psi if it's hot um, it's safe. It's safe in a relatively small volume there. It's also not mixed with oxygen. But when you have it mixed with oxygen and you get over about 30 PSI, it can cause a much bigger explosion rather than just a normal flashback. And that's why, because they're figuring that you're on your regulated side, that you're going to be mixing it with oxygen. So that's why they limit that pressure, not because that pressure in itself is detrimental or dangerous if it was pure acetylene, but when it's mixed with oxygen, it can become hazardous. And that's why you don't uh, run such a high volume with the acetylene. You just, you can't crank up the pressure out of your regulators to make it move that much. And you can't move that much through the bottles either because it's, it's uh, dissolved in acetylene. Now that would be an interesting thing to find out. I couldn't really research that. Let's find out at what point and volume that we really have an explosion from the acetylene within itself making a bad reaction. Uh, and there's pretty, I couldn't get any good definitions on that. And uh, it would be an interesting thing to explore, but I couldn't find it as far as documented science. Uh, just that it existed and there was a, a danger there, but the actual danger point uh, varied all over the place depending on who you looked up for a source. There wasn't a definite, yes, this is dangerous at this point. <clears throat> so we come back here to our cutting, and this is where it all started with, was the what makes sense practical. If you're using acetylene and you're out in the field, you're cutting, you're, you're doing junk stuff. I was, I was mentioning that the acetylene is a lot better because as you're jumping from point to point, you can get that first part of the metal hot quicker with the acetylene because you've got a flame temperature of 3,500 degrees instead of if you were using propane at 2,500. And what you want is you want that corner to be red hot and now we can start cutting. Now, if we're cutting something that is thick, and we're trying to cut a nice straight cut through it, it's not just a matter of preheat and then your oxygen burns through, but you also have a little bit of post heat so that you're not drawing as much heat away from your oxygen cutting through it. Your oxygen and your iron burning through and make your main path, but by heating more again behind it, which you will do with the higher velocity of gas having more heat overall for like a six or a 12 inch piece. A lot of people are saying, oh, I cut thick stuff all the time. The trade-off comes at around two inch thick. So a lot of people think they cut thick, but they're not really cutting thick. Um, 
You could even maybe save some on over one inch by going to propane cost-wise. You may save some. I tend to go most of the time using the acetylene because I want to get started with the cut and it's just handier most of the time. The propane is where I, I go to for the heating. Now, on the other side of this, let's say that we are out here and we're using propane and we're, we're cutting like one inch material out here um, or half inch, half inch is a better, better uh, say on that. So we're cutting half inch with our propane torch and what you will find is that because we're having to hold this 2500 degree temperature for a longer time before we can get started cutting and we're only getting that with oxygen even though we're not using the cost of the acetylene we're spending an awful lot of extra oxygen that we're burning because we're not just using the oxygen for cutting we're using a lot more oxygen for the preheating temperature and so all of that extra oxygen that we throw in with our propane when you're cutting half inch um, three-quarter inch material a lot of times you'll find your overall cost and it's going to vary by location in the US but your overall cost is not saving you as much as you think because you may cut your acetylene cost way down but I've noticed this with some of my friends that just totally went propane and I'm like they go through four times what I do in oxygen for the same amount of cutting now the propane is one quarter the cost so you know there's a lot of difference on both sides the oxygen is the cheaper gas using a lot more oxygen may be beneficial I'm lazy I don't want to pack the bottles that's part of it with my thing too <laughs> I'd, I'd rather get more heat for my amount of oxygen on the preheat and for most of what I do you know where I used to use the propane and I said that propane is good for thick stock we were cutting two inch to five inch. We didn't cut anything super thick there, but that was where we were. And when we would cut the thinner stuff, I just thought it was a totally slow doggy pain in the butt. It was all tracer torch work, and I just was not impressed with it at all on the thinner stuff. Um, while it did the cut, it worked. It was on the thick stuff where you could see it, it, you had to wait longer for the initial cut, but uh, it wasn't really all that much because you're cutting a bigger piece and the heat's coming and soaking from everywhere anyway. So they are different. Heat's different from temperature. Um, and if you want to be fooled, one place that you can really be fooled when you're looking at heat and temperature is when they talk about the the everything around us I'll just put it that way everything around us heating up and they mention it in a specific degree well to mention that in a specific degree is not correct because really the amount of heat that is in everything around us is the number of degrees and what the material is we haven't even done a geological study on the earth good enough to know what the earth is made out of overall we know for a small portion of the crust what it's made out of in some areas, which is totally different. But when you start looking at the science, anyone that says they're a scientist and they want to talk about the degrees of this whole thing that we live on, they're not using science.